Well, good Friday morning. Welcome to another Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. I look forward to these times. Hope that uh, you enjoy listening as much as I enjoy doing this. Just gives me an opportunity to just reach out and spend a few minutes with people that I care deeply for. I was thinking just earlier that it's been about 45 years this month that I received a call that was to change my life. And that call was from a lady named O.C. Herbert down in Wheatland, Missouri. A little village down on the edge of the Missouri Ozarks. And that call came so early in the morning. I don't remember exactly what time it was, but she apologized for calling so early, but said she didn't know what time I went to work, so she wanted to catch me before I went to work. And so uh, I uh, received the call and spoke briefly with O.C. Herbert, and she invited me to come down and preach the next Sunday at the church there in Wheatland, explaining that their pastor had left, they were looking for someone that would take his place and wanted to know if I would come down and meet the people and get acquainted and let them get acquainted with me. And I was happy to do so. And I had only preached just a very few times when that call came. And I didn't tell her that I would just preached a few times. Uh, I wasn't through with my education yet, but I didn't tell her that either. Uh, I was excited about having a place to preach. You see, I was uh, not real popular in school as far as, as uh, one of the brighter students, and while other preachers that were preparing, or other students that were pre preparing for ministry were invited to preach in chapel, and oftentimes to fill in at the churches in other areas, uh, I was never asked to preach in chapel, and only once or twice was I asked to fill in at a church in the area, so I was really excited about having a place to preach. I think maybe I'd preach five or six times when I went down to preach that Sunday in Wheatland, but you know, I look back, and like I say, that's been 45 years ago this month, and it uh, changed my life and the life of my family. I don't know where I would have been had I never gone into the ministry, but I can tell you, as I said here, that there are absolutely no regrets whatsoever in the life that I have lived. And I believe that one reason that I have no regrets in the years of my ministry. When I turned 65 four years ago, I had a little talk with the Lord and told him how much I enjoyed preaching the gospel and, and associating with his people and trying to give leadership to his church. And I asked God that if he, to give me another 10 years of ministry. I thought that, you know, at the age of 75, that might be a good time to quit. So I asked the Lord for another 10 years and the past four years have gone by so swiftly that I'm asking God to give me another 11 years of ministry, which would bring me up to the ripe old age of 80. I don't know whether God will honor that request or not. It depends, I guess, on whether he wants to, and that's fine with me, whatever his desire may be, but I'm perfectly willing to go another 11 years uh, with the help of the Lord as long as he extends his grace and strength, uh, both physically and spiritually. I'm just happy in what I'm doing. And as I was trying to assess the reason why I cannot imagine life any other way for me, is the only thing that I can explain is that my life is not a choice, but it's a calling. I was a young lad when I told people when they asked me what I wanted to be, that I was going to be a cowboy preacher. I've never been a cowboy, but I have been trying to preach now for 45 years, and, and I'm glad that uh, I recognized at an early age that the call of God was upon my life. It was only as a junior high school student that I really submitted to that call and knew in my heart for sure that that's what that I would do. But you know, when it's a calling and not a choice, then you don't have too much choice in the matter. You know, the Bible tells us that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Now, I don't know that God ever revokes the call that he places upon uh, someone's life. There may be uh, reasons, perhaps, that people do leave the ministry, but I believe if it's a true calling that we have an obligation to fulfill the calling that God has given to us. 
Now, you know, God has given me a specific calling and given me a wonderful ministry down across the past 45 years. And every Christian isn't going to have a definite call such as I had. Every Christian isn't going to have a ministry that is on the level of my ministry. Every Christian isn't going to, uh, you know, serve God in the same way that some of us are called to serve God. But I just like to remind people from time to time that uh, God needs everyone. And I think so often, you know, I come to church and say, oh, I'm glad to be in my father's house today and sit at his table and receive the spiritual food and, and be blessed as a child of God. I like to start out the day praying our Father which art in heaven and uh, coming to him as one of his dear children. Lord, you know as your child that I need your help today and I need your provision. I need you to take care of me and I love being a child of God. I like to think of him as being my heavenly father and be one of his dear children that he loves so much. So I talked about yesterday in our devotional you know, as a child of God, he loves us so much that he overlooks our imperfections. He tolerates our shortcomings and helps us in all the mistakes that we make. He is so forgiving of all of that. And yet we are also the servants of God. And I believe that everybody ought to serve some role as a servant of God. And I know that if you're not really uh, believing that you have much value to God, you're just one of his children that puts your feet under his table and ask him for daily bread and the provision of every temporal need. I'm here to tell you that you can be blessed as a servant of God as well as a child of God. And if we earnestly begin to ask God to reveal to us what gifts he has given and how we might be able to serve him, well, we might be surprised how God can use us so I'm thankful as I was reflecting upon the years of my ministry and how grateful I am that God has privileged me. I thank God that he has honored me in such a way as allowing me to be a minister down across these years. And I thank God that I still have the, the fire burning in my heart to want to continue to do as I'm doing as long as it's his will. But uh, I do just want to be used of God. God should decide that pastoring and preaching is uh, enough, uh, then I believe he'll open another door of ministry. And I don't care how old or how feeble I get, I hope that there's always a desire to be used of God. So ask God to use you in some way, and let's get the job of building his kingdom done. Get as much done here in these last days before he comes again. Well, let's pray and thank God for his blessing and Ask him to use us today. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the blessings of God that we enjoy as the children of God. Thank thee for the grace and the strength that thou dost give us servants of God. We just want to be a faithful servant. There's nothing in this world I want any more than to one day stand in the presence of God and hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. So help us to work, to strive, and to trust that we may someday hear those words. Bless each one of our lives this day, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow on Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Goodbye.